Network family, welcome to another episode of our show. A little bit sore, I'm sorry, I apologize for that, but you know, always ready to talk about the best wrestling in the world, and NXT UK is always the brand that provides us for us. But before we do that, thank you so very much for the support that you gave us for the video for AW Dynamite, or oh, the Double or Nothing review. That was great. We actually love the support. We're actually going to keep making more content for every single one of you. And right here we are to talk about NXT UK because this was a big week. We had a great main event. So, Paul, are you happy in the way that things ended? Or, you know, finally? Yeah, no. I mean, I was excited for this match. And I said, you know, whichever of the two teams wins, because we knew that Mustache Mountain doesn't, wasn't going to retain. That was reaching its boiling point. We knew Trend 7 was going to cheat, going to turn. You, you could smell it. You knew it was going to happen. So it was just, do we go with that feel-good story of Smith and Carter? Or do you go with the team that's real hot right now and probably the best faction in all of NXT UK, D Familia, you know? So it was a toss-up. To me, it was it was a win-win. And, you know, I really enjoyed the match. And, you know, the stuff we saw before it, I didn't really hate as well. I mean, it was, what you're going to talk about it here in a little bit, it was the best um, Von Wagner match that I saw. Yeah. So, you know, but you got to give that to Sam Bradwell. But, I mean, this I was a say, pretty solid you know, episode of NXT UK. It was pretty quick because they gave it, like, you know, the, the triple threat match. They gave it a lot of time, pretty much, like, the second half of the show. It was just the triple threat oh, match. Yeah. So that's good. You know, great choice of, like, how they broke everything. So, really good stuff. Like I said, thank you so very much again. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It help us. You know, we're going to be here for Hell in a Cell. So, you know, like... WWE just likes to feature Monday Night Raw on everything on that show. SmackDown doesn't even count. Hey, that's you know that we won't talk that in hand in the cell. But like you said, uh, Gradwell, Sam Gradwell going against Bob Wagner. And that was like the mm, first match that we had. And you know why did Bob Wagner had a good match because of Gradwell. Gradwell yeah, is man. such a great wrestler, and also like they found a good story to tell us. Yeah, and he sold for this guy. I mean, he would take one punch from Von Wagner and he'd fall to the ground. He'd sell it. But he, and then he'd sell it, you know, vi like facially too. Like the look on his face was like he just got punched in the face. Not like, you know, the stuff we see on NXT 2.0. But the, the match, it was good. You know, you had Von Wagner in control, the bear hug. Oh, could Gradwell get out? He gets out, but then he gets him in the bear hug again. Then eventually Gradwell gets him in the sleeper. And you think that's it. The crowd's hot. They wanted Gradwell to win, obviously. You know, he's the hometown guy. <laughs> But, you know, he kind of gets him up in the fireman's carry, hits his big finish, one, two, three, pins him. And, I mean, hey, it was what it was. We knew they were going to push Von Wagner. I'm glad they didn't job out Gradwell. He hung in there. You know, he kicked out of a lot of big moves from Von Wagner. So, you know, hey, it's, it's not awful, but I, I really wish he wouldn't have booked it because Gradwell was a guy who had a lot of momentum. You know, Von Wagner should have just beat up a bunch of jobbers. He should have challenged Ilya Dragunov, lost, obviously, but still look good. You know, don't beat guys who have names and have, you know, momentum here like Sam Gradwell. Oh, yeah. My, my big thing with this is, like, also, Bob Wagner came back to the United States. So what was that really, like, what was the whole point of this? Oh, yeah, just a couple tapings to get him over, and that's it. But so, like, it shouldn't be at the only, expense of these guys. That was the, my only point, you know, that there's not really, like, an end goal for Bob Wagner. But I feel that, like you said, great match. And in the end, like you said, Gradwell at least loses, but looks decent. So at least, you know, where he's not buried. And he had to do the job. We said it last week also in the review. If you don't believe us, I watched that review for last show. So and in the end, you know, Bob Wagner gets the win. Uh, he doesn't even have a match. See, that's the thing. He doesn't even have a match at NXT in your house. So that tells you how old Bob Wagner really is. But, you know, Paul, let's go with like, the next match. And this is Angel Hayes. We've seen her a lot of times. They're using her so many more. So much more that we like we seen with a male we saw a little bit of a preview with like also Saya Brookside and Eliza also like that it's gonna have a single match but in this situation she was against Tibby Turner we've seen this match before also and it's to me the only thing that like the women's division is suffering from is like they lost five top talent and that's why they need they don't have really a number one contender for what it is Meiko Saramura except for Ivy Nile we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit but remember they lost Genie they lost uh, also Danny Luna, they lost uh, Piper Niven, they lost Kaylee Ray, and they lost also uh, Eva Valkyrie. So, like, yeah, you got to think and, and a Blair, Davin Davin Blair Davenport's not there anymore. Yeah. You know, well, the, she's hurt, you know, and everything. Radio. Yeah, so, I mean, a, a, a lot of women, and, you know, this match, I mean, the only thing that it, it did for me is I think you, Angel Hayes, she, she wasn't, even though she didn't get an entrance, you know, so it's like it makes you think of a jobber when you don't get an entrance, but, you know, she hung in there. She had a couple opportunities where she looked pretty good. So I think it's like, hey, 
this is a girl who maybe in a year, six months from now might be in a title contention if we slowly, maybe not six months, like a year, you know, year and a half from now, slowly push her, move her up the ranks. And, you know, that's what I think they're going to do. But, you know, maybe Stevie Turner gets another shot. And, you know, maybe they're trying to push her, do something with her. Maybe she'll go to NXT 2.0. Maybe Vince and them, they see her and she's really gimmicky. She has the gimmick that she's from the future or whatever. And they were really selling Blood. the gimmick. They're really selling the gimmick on commentary. So maybe Vince and them see her and they're like, oh, 2.0. Come on, you know, we'll take her. So maybe they're giving her a push before. I don't know. But it's we got to wait and see. It's true. So Stevie gets the win. That was interesting to see. So, you know, tell me a little bit about we're going to see this next week. Kenny Williams and Mike Andrews. He said that, like Andrews mentioned, that he's actually almost 100% for his shoulder injury. But then Kenny Williams was trying to do something with his car. So they roll a little bit on the outside. So this probably is going to keep continuing the storyline with the mask man. And, so, and, how, and how nice was it? It's one thing you almost never hear anymore. When uh, Mark Andrews was like, hey, what are you doing? And, you know, him and Kenny Williams started fighting. You heard the cameraman scream, somebody get some help. Yeah. You never hear that. In, in like AEW, even WWE main roster or nothing, you never hear, you know, a cameraman screaming for help. It's just, oh, I'll just stand here and film silently and just watch this guy get the shit beat out of him. No big deal. But, I mean, yeah, they had the pull apart. And then in the back, you saw the mask guy squatting, you know. And, oh, we got to wait to see who it is. But we all know, you know, who it it's is. Amir Jordan. Jordan. So, I mean, this is going to be this is going to be good. And I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it is. I mean, you know, I'm sure the spoilers are out there and it is. But hopefully, you know, they don't pull some swerve and it's, you know, some bullshit. Guy no, yeah. There. No, and, it is a mirror. Yeah. I mean, I'm not completely sure about, like, you know, even the facial, like. Yeah, you, you would have to assume. You would have to assume because he was so good and, like, the loser leave town. It's like, for what reason? Why fi get rid of this Maybe guy? When, you know, injured. yeah. Maybe he yeah, was he was injured, probably injured, probably resting or something. Yeah. Things like that. It could be. But, you know, also next week for the, like I said, Women's Championship, NXT UK, Mako Sotomayor going against Ivy Nile. This is going to be good for both. Maybe Mako teaching a little bit more of Ivy. Let's see what Ivy can actually really do with, like, a grand top-tier talent. But in the end, we know that Mako's not going to lose that championship because even Ivy Nile is back on NXT 2.0 and she's not a like half that belt. So that tells you everything right there. But again, it's a good showing for her, and maybe that could maybe take her to the next level, to the main roster. Hopefully not for like her benefit or for her sake. But I mean, it's going to be a good match, and then we can see who's next, what's next for Mako. Yeah, and we saw a promo from Ivy Nile, kind of more of the same thing, this and that. Bring the title. Nobody out there. Nobody outworks yeah. me, right? Yeah, yeah, blah blah blah. Whatever, Christian Cage. But um, you know, then Mako said more. She had a th uh, interaction they showed from last week. With her, with uh, Amelia McKenzie. Yeah, Amelia McKenzie. Thank you. Too many blondes. I can't think all their names. Yeah, right? that's right. I'm thinking about something else. No, no, no. Just kidding. <clears throat> but um, I, she's like, "Hey, Mako, I'm sorry. I was bullshit. I couldn't get the win." And when she's like, "I couldn't beat Lash Legend," I feel like she, in her head, she's like, "I can't believe I said that name out loud. Like, really? Like, what a stupid like, but whatever." And even Mako and was it, not fine. It was not. And nice and, at and, all. and the. And the promo from Mako was so awkward. I know English, you know, obviously she's not super fluent in it, but we've heard her talk before where it sounded more natural. You know what I mean? This She's like, I am mad at you. I am disappointed. You need to be stronger. And you I'm like, work harder. I'm like, what is she like? You know, if she's a teacher, she should be like, you know, hey, you know, it's legit. Let's watch this tape. We'll get better. You know, no, she just like scolded her like it, like she's pissed off at her and just walked away. So I'm like, and I don't know, like, what you do. This was just a weird interaction. And since that, I would say since the feud with, um, oh, I, oh what the heck was her name now? Isla, Isla, Dawn. Dawn, Isla, Dawn. Isla Dawn. Since that feud, Mako just kind of feels a little bit like, Ugh. and I think, I don't know if it's just because you're doing this 2.0 feud and stuff with her, but it almost kind of feels like Bret Hart. When I watch a match, man, she gets over. But then when I see promos and stuff, I'm like, ugh. It's like, <laughs> no, like, ugh. Damn. Unfortunately, yeah. that's what it is. And again, it's because we already mentioned six top-tier talent, women that could have been in this division asking for a championship match. They don't, yeah. all of them gone. So there yeah. you go. That's why this division is suffering really, really bad. I don't know what Eva Valkyrie is. Her contract may be expired. She might be done. I don't know. She's injured. I don't know what the situation is. It might have just been the injury because depending what bone you break or whatever that whatever it is, you know, it does take a couple. And you know, Jeannie went, went to the United States with Walter, so that's another one that is completely gone. And you know, Danny Luna, Viper, even is doing. Oh, yeah. Right oh, so speaking of that, not to get too off topic, where where was uh, what's his name? Jesus, who was with her. 
Who? With Jenny. Oh, uh, oh, um, with Joseph Connors. Yeah, where, where'd he go? There you go. There's another one. Done. Like See, that would be a guy. That's a guy who Von Wagner should have beat the shit of. Nobody gives a crap about him. Beat him up. Get Von Wagner over in three minutes. Not Sam Bradwell. But anyway, moving And maybe Paul, they, their contract could still expire, though. So that's why maybe they didn't. And I, I would feel like you would have heard about you. You would hear about that even from NXT UK. They usually that stuff. They usually won't inform you. You're right. So let's talk about this because this is also like the main thing of the show. And it was a great tag, triple threat match tag team for the titles. And you know it took what like 35 minutes of the show. A lot of opportunities here. The Familia did a great job. I was actually rooting for them, but we knew that like they wanted a good ending, a good ending for some of them, and then the beginning of a better story when it comes to the former tag team champions per se, and that's Mustache Mountain. So Paul, can you tell me a little about this match? How did you, what did you like? What did you like? Well, I like that they did it the way where it's you know every team has one person in the ring at all times, not where it's just two teams. Are like two people in the ring, even though there's three teams. So then you have two jabrones just standing in one corner, like waiting for the tag. Yeah, which is, is so stupid. But um, the, the match was obviously good. You know, all six of these guys are awesome. They're all great wrestlers. They all know what they're doing. And you know, we didn't see no Dempsey. You know, nothing like that. So that I like too. You know, they kept it legit. I don't know if that was told. If they said, "Oh, if he comes out, you guys are done." I don't know if that was said and I missed it or something like that, or barred from ringside. I know they were barred from the A Kid match or whatever. But you know, it's just one of those things where I like that because it kept it clean, even though they said, "Oh, no DQ and a triple threat, even a tag match," which is so stupid. But it that's whatever. that's really stupid. Yeah, but I mean, th this was good. Every team looked good in here. Amelia had, had times where they looked good. Smith and Carter looked good. Obviously, the, the champs looked good. I mean, the, the main thing is just like all these matches do, they kind of go in, into crazy chaos. And then at one point, yeah, like everybody in the ring. And then I think it was T.O. Man was trying to submit Tyler Bate because Tyler Bate picked him up for the airplane spin. And he got out of it. And he got him in the cross face and he was going to tap him out. And I'm like, but none of them are legal i think teal man might have been legal but trent seven was legal he was sitting up on the apron like he was drunk like oh, sir. and because he was gotten he was knocked out i mean it was like complete chaos i the ref was even like no no he's not legal like what are you doing get out of here it's all this you no know, it was everything was going crazy and but eventually you know he gets the belt and that's where i'm thinking even though it's no you say no dq the ref should still be like grabbing the belt not like oh just no don't do it don't do it so that was my only criticism that and that's kind of like what errol yeah. hebner used to do you know he'll be more like a prominent figure right there he'll take yeah like at least take. like pretend that. to grab the belt and yeah, then maybe you know whatever you know something but you know he goes you know then tyler Bate grabs it and you know he kind of pulls it away from him like no don't be bullshit we want to win this legit and then uh, I I think he just rolls him up, doesn't he? He rolls him up. That's yeah, he, he yeah he just rolls him up. You know, falls you know really deep in that cover. You know, no pulling the tights. You know, they're hundred nope. percent baby face. You know, but he just rolls him up. One, two, three, and Smith and Carter win. And I mean, like I said, I have no problems with it. Deep Familia, I think, is a team where if any team's gonna beat these two guys, that's the team to do it. And I'm not saying first feud, boom, do it right away and you know play hot potato. But hey, give these guys four or five months title reign okay whatever you build up the familiar and then, and then beat up more people and you do this match again because you uh, the one thing i'm going to say we're definitely not going to see the rematch of mustache mountain you know they, they're not going to get their oh, title rematch the because of that's what we saw end. after this you know there was some interaction some back and forth you know trend seven like dude i was going to do anything to hold these belts i told you without them i'm done and then Tyler Bates trying to calm him down. He's like, no, we're done. You know, he smacks him away. Like, don't touch me. So, man, you see them tempers flare. And like we said, this is exactly what we needed. You saw how, you know, Trent Seven was, he turned into such like a desperate guy. You know, one, he he like was in this, uh, the hunt for these belts. And then once he got it, it was like Gollum having the ring and Lord of the Rings. It was like his precious, like he couldn't lose it. He's yeah. like, I need this title belt. And when he lost it, you know, you saw now, he's gone crazy and we're going to see this feud and i mean this is going to be good because how much footage do you have of these guys think of the video the video package alone is going to get you hyped up for this you show these guys from four or five years ago you know all this stuff you know all, they, 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 they have all the and also they have all the progress footage and all the other footage from the uk and all that stuff so they can probably show that from like 
you know, 2000, you know, from like 22 years ago, whatever. Or, the the work, baby, yeah, probably, well, he probably didn't, wasn't even wrestling. The promo work like, is going to be great, but, and the video package yeah. is going to be amazing. So whenever it takes place, we're going to be looking forward for that because it's yeah. going to be great. And it was done in a good way. I mean, I, I thought it was going to be a mistake of one of them, but it was more like they played out with Trent Seven. It's just I, I cannot lose this, and I will do whatever it takes to not lose it. So Yeah, and, and I actually like how Tyler Bate was directly involved in the distraction and then the roll-up and everything because it just adds more heat to their feud. Yeah, no, the, the way that they did it, it was good. I, I'm actually happy, and you see like the dissension between the two of them. So this is going to be the beginning of one of the greatest feuds in NXT UK history. Right here, you have it. Mm -hmm. We waited. When and and, how, and how, how great was the whole ending? You saw the, the new champs. They celebrated. It was legit. And then afterwards, you know, then they showed the highlights, the whole match, everything, whatever. You think the show's over? No. You see this little interaction? Then the show ends. If this was AEW, you probably would have had somebody beat up Smith and Carter and all this other stuff. and Or even main roster. I mean, see, this is, you know, I'm not, I'm insulting pretty much every promotion except NXT UK right here. Because the way they book it, it all makes sense. And you go home with that feeling of... This was great, and I want to see more. Exactly. So, family, great episode of NXT UK. You know, next week also we have the NXT Women's Championship match. I mean, because I'm wearing Ivy Nile. It should be, it should be this, not least. We have two weeks, all about a good, good stuff, and then we got to see what's going on with Ilya Dragunov. We haven't heard everything from the champion. We need to, like, Yeah, well, yeah, that, that, that's that. what I was thinking, too, watching this show. Like, no promo, no nothing. It's been, like, now three weeks since we've heard from him, so... No, we need something definitely next week. We need week. something from Ilya Dragunov and also like maybe Rampage Round might be like, okay, I'm ready to come back. Maybe take this feud. Maybe I'm the one that has to dethrone Ilya Dragunov. Maybe it's time. Only time will tell, but we're ready for it. So family, thank you so very much. Don't forget, we're going to be here for Hell in a Cell. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Hey, so send us a comment. Thank you for the ones that are commenting. We appreciate it. And where else can they find us? And the guys, so you stay up to date with everything Rope Break's doing, follow us, Rope Break, on Facebook, the OG Rope Break on Twitter, original Rope Break on Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok, and of course, right here on YouTube, the home of the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the original Rope Break. And you and me have one more thing that is left to say, and that is... Uh... uh the...